Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today. Um, it starts by me, Yum Studio. I'm Simon from Avago Ink Designs and I'm really excited about doing this but I'm a little bit nervous so hopefully we'll get through this and you'll be inspired by the I'm going to show you. So if um, anybody didn't see the Facebook Live the other day, I launched the Dinosaur Stamps which I'm being so impressed with and so happy and I've, the comments have been lovely. But if you didn't see the Facebook Live, I think the best thing to do is give you a quick run through them now. So, let's start off with the Sample and Dive set. So this is the first one that we've got. So I'll just hold it to the camera, try it with the glare. And all these steps are on a special offer at the moment at 28.99. And they do come with the corresponding die. So I'll let you just look through those. You can see they've got sentiments there, like, Happy Birthday, you old dinosaur. And then on the back, we've got the corresponding dies. So it's a really good kit. You've got a good selection in there. And you can get going with just one packet. So that's your first design. Your second design is this one. Oh, I'll just tilt it back a bit. And this has got the one that like peeks around the corner as well, just on the opposite side. Uh, the footprints as well, and the stones, just to build out your design a little bit more. And same with those, they come with the corresponding dies at the back. And then we've got our third design, which is this one. And this has got that lovely big sentiment saying, a raw means I love you in dinosaur and then you've got wishing you a two excellent day and you've got another three of the characters there that's brilliant and we've got the background stamp and the background stamp is 15.99 and that's also on offer as well as an introductory and that's a really big landscape um, really easy to create your scenes with and as you can see you could just use half of that and you'll get a really different card so you've got the trees on one side they could cut the other half off and just have like the hills there with the rock and then we've also got two stencils. So we've got these two stencils, we've got this hilly one, and then we've got this like really modern design here, and both of these are $6.99. So that's the range, that's the first collection. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run to a VT now of some samples that have been made uh, while I set up my first demonstration. So I'll see you in just two seconds. I hope you enjoyed that, that was just a small collection of stamps you can make. So for today's first sample we're going to be using um, this little character here, which is a little dinosaur, and some of the actual other stamps that you get in the set, so let's put that there for you. A really simple card, I just want to show you how to do it, and it works with the dinosaurs, but if you've got some stamps at home yourself, you can easily do this with the stash that you've got. So let's get started. I'm just going to put a piece of paper down so we don't get ink everywhere. And what I'm going to do is I've got our character already on the stamping block. I'm just going to ink him up. I'm going to stamp him in the middle to start off with. Nice for firm pressure. And we're going to build this design out now going outwards. Now we need to change this stamp so it doesn't look like they're all in one direction. And don't worry about leaving gaps between them because it really doesn't matter. So let's do this one going this way.
It's like one of the magic eye pictures, this when you get to end. I'm just going to turn this around a bit so we get one going off the page. There's lots of you out there joining me. I'm really um, privileged that you took the time to do that today. Hope you like these stamps as well. I'm going this way now. This would also be a really good idea for wrapping paper if you wanted to coordinate a gift. And don't worry if you slightly miss your stamp image, but you can always fill it in later with a, a black marker. Just a few more. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to put that to one side that paper and what I'm going to do now I'm going to use a, just a, a light green that I've got which is very um, sympathetic with the colours we're going for and we're just going to loosely just draw around each dinosaur to give it a little bit of a colour to make it come out from that whiteness and you don't have to be exact but it just it just helps lift it out really and you could do the semi colour as well that you've got at home so you might want to do a pink or a purple themed one they're quite nice to see this in flowers actually I'm going to go around these dinosaurs. Have you all got your cup of tea then ready while you're watching this? So we keep around these. I'm sure they've one prepared earlier, like Blue Peter, shall I? See what we've got out there today, then. So we've got a uh, fizzy Tracy on there. Great tip, thank you for that, Tracy. Anybody know any dinosaur jokes? I'm sure between you could come up with a dinosaur joke. What do you call a dinosaur with one eye? Do you think he saw us? That's about the only one I've got on top of my head. Thank you to the um, design team as well that helped me out with some of the samples. They did an amazing job, which I'm sure you've seen on their Facebook. If not, I'd suggest you go over and have a look. Because they're really good. Some good creativity there. Some good ideas that you could easily do. So I'll just go around these. You could also do this with a bigger dinosaur, which probably would have took a little bit less time. But I think this one works well, so I wanted to use this one. It doesn't have to be exact, it just needs to give that kind of contrast that lifts off the white page. There we go. Could also do them in different shades of green as well, but I like to keep it in one tone. So was that Sue and Dave Breton? Thanks for the comic wording of your stamps. Oh yeah, I do like a good pun, I've got to say. I like a card to make me laugh. I like a little bit of comedy in there. 
think we need it at the present moment as well. With all that's happening. So just onto these final ones. Has anybody come up with a dinosaur joke yet? Nearly there. You could spend a bit longer at home doing this. I just don't want to bore you all to uh, go around all these dinosaurs. Okay, so I think that's going to be big enough now. And what I'm going to be doing is die cutting a square. So, what I can just do is lay that on there and make sure that all the ones I want to use have been actually coloured into. You can see that there. So, I don't need to worry about these that I've got at the bottom now because they're going to be out of my cutting area. So let me just quickly die cut that into a square. You can see there, using the Dazzy Good template. So I know now I don't need to do any of these in the lower because it's going to be chopped off. And any little bits like, for instance, this foot, I can quickly fill in afterwards with, when we've die cut. So let me just quickly put this through the die cut. So who's I'm just reading the comments. So so many of these for February is the grandson's gonna be two. We've got a card somewhere with the number two on actually. We'll just fix that one over. She might want to see that, it might be a bit of inspiration for you. And this is for I think it was Bernadette that I think the comment came from. It's a lovely little card that one that one of the design team did it. I can't remember if it was oh it was Maz. That's a lovely idea to put a massive number two there and it looks like um, the feature of the card, isn't it? Right, so, let's just see if that's done cut through. Just missed that, so I'm just quickly grab my scissors. I'll just finish that off a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I've just got, I've got a piece of green card, just that goes with this kind of colour that we're using, gives a bit of contrast. I'm just going to quickly mat and layer that onto there so I've got a nice base for the card blank in a second. So I'm just get my tape runner. I don't need a big board around there, I just want a small, thin, green line. Let's pop that on there. And I'm just going to use my paper trimmer now to just chop that down off a bit. Get another edge. I really do like this paper trimmer, it is available in um, Tony's shop actually. It's got like a guide way to help you cut, so it's brilliant. Yeah. I'm just going to trim that other side. There we go. And I've got an 8x8 card blank, so I'm going to mount this onto there now. So let's make sure we're opening the right way. Get the tape pen again. There we 
again. And that just gives a really good impact to a background there. So now what we're going to do is cut out a corresponding green centre which we're going to put in the centre there. And so I've got another square die for that. So let's just put that through the die cutter. Thank you, Tracy. I'm doing my best. <laughs> well set, uh, Sandra, thank you. So it was a sense of the clouds and sun rays. I'm not sure what that comment's about. I did do a demonstration though using um, a cloud edge to get a really nice skyline, so maybe it's that one that we're talking about. A smaller circle and just some stamping card. I'll just pop that one through now. Oh, thank you, May. I do try to do a nice, colourful demonstration. So now I've got the centre, I'm going to stick this on directly because I want to make it a little bit wonky. I don't like it to be too straight, I think it looks a little bit different when you actually centre it. A little bit like that rather than if I put it dead in the centre. I think it was just hang on the edge for me. So I prefer to do it more like that. So I'm going to stick that into place now. Let's get my tape runner. square now, the white one on the stamping card. And what I'm going to do to this one is we're just going to use these little feet stamp and just um, break it up a little bit, a bit like we did with the big dinosaurs. So I think I'm going to use the big one for this. Put that onto my stamping block. I'm just going to randomly put some feet onto here to break it up. All different directions as well. You could do them going off the corners and the edges, it doesn't really matter. Just a few more. Just give that a quick blast with a heat gun so that it don't mix with the marker a second. So Margaret says that other stamps now on the SPM website. Yes, they are. If you go onto the Spam Me website, you can just search Avago. But um, I believe once I finish this first demonstration, what we'll do is we'll put the link on and show you how to access it on the website. So stay tuned for that and I'll tell you when to have a look. So like we did with the other one, we're just going to quickly edge the green around these feet. So we don't have to be too precise again, but it just takes the edge off of them. And you could even do some smaller ones to break it up a little bit. I bet this will look nice actually um, to actually emboss it if you had the time. Look quite nice, especially like in a gold or a silver. And 
just do these last few. Thank you to everybody who has actually ordered the stamps up to now though. I'm sure you'll be getting them really shortly. I'd love to see what cards you make with them, so please do share your pictures when you do get them. You can inspire each other then. Right, so I've done that. And then what I'm going to do now is using this piece of leftover stamping card, I'm just going to trim that bit off because we don't need it. I'm going to use this sentiment today, which is you're extraordinary. And that's one out of the, one of the collections that we've got for sale. Let's put it onto the stamp block. And all I want to do with this one is just stamp this sentiment repeatedly in a line. So I'm just going to use the bottom of this um, card as a guide. And then we'll do the same again. Stamp that little bit off there. And then we'll go in a little bit higher, do the same again. Okay. Let's wipe that ink up before we have an accident somewhere with that. So I'm just going to get my trimmer again. All I'm going to do is trim these down so we've got a nice long strip of a sentiment. Again, I can use that guide on here to help me do that. That's the first one. One side. And what I'm going to do now is glue this onto the same green that we use on this backing just to bring it out again. Nice thin line of glue down there should be enough to hold that on for us. I'm just going to glue that towards the bottom of that one. Same with the other one. Oh, you always get a blockage in your glue when you need it. There we go, that should be enough. I'm just going to Stick that one on underneath. And then we're just going to trim these down as well. Just so we've got a nice green border on either side of these sentiment lines. There we go, that's the first one. And I'll just do the same for the second one. Make sure that glue's grabbed before I try and cut it so it'll fly off. There we go. So I'm now going to use the the sentiment strips just to break this area up. So I'm going to put one at an angle like that. And make sure when you do this as well that I always try and make sure that there's a full sentiment visible when you're doing this, you can then use the excess either side. So make sure you centre that one where you want it and then you can use the other bits just to hang off the side of the card. Um, it just looks a lot better I think. So let's get these down. So we're going to have one this way. Let's put it there. And we'll the other one going the other way. And 
just going to trim those edges off that we don't need. Double-sided foam pads on this to raise it up a little bit. Put plenty on so it doesn't sag in the middle. Centre that in there for us. And just move that away. And then the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to re-stamp our main image that we used for the background. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of colour into the centre of this card now. So we're not going to go with green. I'm going to stamp this and we're going to do it in bright reds and purples just so it actually lifts the design so it's not all one colour. So I'll just get a little bit of stamping card that I've got left. Just stamp this a second. Classic colour using the bright red. So what cards are you going to make when you get these stamps there? So I think they suit um, everybody, not just children. It depends how you actually use them. But I do like the um, the number two card that we saw earlier, I think using the big numbers really gives great effect for it. I'm just going to pull the rest of this in. Around his legs. Yeah, I agree, Karen. They are suitable for men's cars as well, which is nice. As quite often it is um, female based cars, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah. So I'll well, just finish off this character then. Uh, we're just going to cut to the VT and just show you some more inspiration you can do with these stamps. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that VT of all the um, samples that we can do. Just give some more inspiration. I'm just going to finish off this little dino now with a 
purple tummy. So like I say at home you could spend a little bit more time finishing this up, make sure it's perfect. But I just want to get the um, card finishing show you. So I'm just going to die cut that one now. Let's get a die for this dinosaur. So lucky you are telling me. So I've been making all these wonderful samples and I didn't have any dies for these, so I've had to cut them all by hand. So I'm so grateful that these little dies have come out now. What could I say? Let's put that through the die cut. I think I just saw an idea from somebody in the um, comments actually, they're going to cover a notebook with these which I think would look really good. Um, it'd be nice to give it a complete theme then, wouldn't it? So I'm just going to pop one of these on the back. One on its head. And I'm going to finish this off by putting this little fella running along this kind of sentiment line. There you go. So. That's his first demo finished. So a really easy card, really easy to do this kind of effect where you just highlight the actual stamps image with a, a pale pastel colour. Um, and it just, it's just a quick easy card, you could easily do this with other stamps that you've got, flowers maybe. Um, have a play around with it. Nice to see um, cards that aren't square as well, my old DL shape. So um, I think, are we able to show where the um, stamps are on the website? at this point where I just set up for my next demonstration. Is that okay? some of your comments. Oh thank you for all the um, well done's and the great cards and lovely ideas. Um, I hope I'm um, doing you justice on your screens for you joining me today anyway. But let's have a look where we can just try and show you on the website now where we can get the have a go range. Just clear everything for the next demonstration. Oh, thank you, Amanda, that's a lovely comment. And the fact they come with the dyes is brilliant, isn't it? So. So on the website then we've got his own little drop down bar on the left side of the going design. So if you just click onto that and then it brings up the sample and dies and the stencils. So if you click into those and you'll see the full range. And you can see all the offer prices we've got as well as it's a launch offer. So really easy to find. Um, 
if you've got any queries, just message me and I'll, I'll direct it to the right place. They're all there for you. And then we're, gonna, we're now going to do a second demo. And this is another card I've got. Put that way around for you. And this is using that lovely stencil that we've just seen on the um, website there. So let's get started with this one. I'll put that to one side. So I've got a piece of stamping card to start with. I'm just going to grab the stencil that I need to use. What I'm going to do is just put it into the centre of this card. I purposely cut it a little bit bigger so I've got some workspace to work off. I'm just going to tack it down at the top with some masking tape. Okay, so. The colours I've chosen for this, so I've got Broken China, Cracked Pistachio, and then I've also got some Evergreen Brown. And I want to do this graduated from the blue to the bottom, Cracked Pistachio in the middle, and then the brow towards the top, so it gives a little bit of depth when we're doing this. So let's start off with a bit of the Broken China. So because it's got quite fine lines, what I'm going to do is just hold this down. Uh, you could even use a scrap of card and you could hold it in place and then it's going to brush some of the excess off and then just brush it away on the stamp. Stencil, sorry. Let's get some of that down. You could do this light as well, but I like to do it really vibrant, so I'll do that that way. And I'm just going to turn the stencil around, and I can work in the other direction then. Okay. I'm just going to make that blue come a little bit higher in the centre. That gives a little bit more depth with the next colour. Okay, and then we'll switch over then to the cracked pistachio. And do the same again. I'm just going to brush that out. Use the hills as like a guide, really. Towards me, so it's a bit easier. So, nice dark colours as well, it makes it a bit more vibrant. And I'm going to switch them to the darker one. The evergreen band. I'm just going to get rid of the excess off this so they don't ruin. There we go. And then the same again, I'm just going to brush that in. I'm trying to follow the stencil line so I don't go against it and it should, shouldn't move as much. Now it does look messy this, but I promise you it will come together in the end. So I'm going to bring that darker colour just down a little bit to burn that. There we go. So we've got our three colours laid down now. So let's put them stamped with some colours to one side. And move those off. I'm just going to take this stencil off. Put that to one side. How effective does that look already? Look at the graduation you've got from the blue to the light green to the dark green. 
this will all be trimmed off on the edge anyway, so don't worry about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work out where we need to place the sun on this design. So what I've done for this is actually ended up making my own stencil for this. So I'm just going to use a scrap of card and I'm just going to die cut a circle into it. So I'm just going to die cut that now for just a few seconds. It's actually an old one I have in my stash, so it's not one that, um, it's not one of this range. I'm not sure whether Tony's got any on the website, I'd have to have a look for you. If I do, I'll have a look in the shop after, and if she does, I'll um, let you all know. So then, what I've done is I've cut that circle out of this green card, I'm going to place this where I want the sun to be. So I'm going to put my sun there, and then I've got some bright yellow mustard seed. And I'm just going to stamp that into place. So I'm just going to bring that down just a tad there. There we go. And this is the easiest way I've found to actually do a sun actually on your card. So if you do it this way, you get a nice neat finish. But then there's a clever trick. Trick, sorry. There we go. Okay, so I've done that. As you can see, we've got that in a really nice location on our design. But I want to mask that now so I don't contaminate it with the blue when I do it. So with the die cut I've cut out, we can use that then to mask the same area. This it's the exact same fit. And then what I tend to do is just put a bit of masking tape on the back as a handle so I've got something to hold as we're doing this. And I'm going to use now a lighter colour for the scan. Tumble uh, glass, I think it's called. So I'll just get some of this. And because we've got that kind of sun blocked off, I don't have to worry about the blue contaminating it, making it green. So I'm just going to work this in just gently around that circle. I don't want to go too heavy with this because I want the sentiment to be the star up here. And because we've got this, we can just drag that out. Nice and lightly in that top half. I'm just going to turn this around so it's easy to do. There we go. Same with this one. And take it down to the hills as well. Don't have to be heavy on this, just wanting like a light impression of the blue. And then I'm just going to just continue that blue going across the top. I quite like the circle as well with these um, dabbers because if you do press a bit too heavy it just kind of looks like a cloud. So you can see that that's building. Just bring that down a little bit more. There we go. And then you can see when I remove this, it's not actually affected the sun in any way. It's really um, good and it's not doing anything to the edge, which is what we want. We want a nice professional card. So then what I'm going to use now is a sentiment that I brought, which is from one of the other sets. And this is the Happy Birthday You Old Dinosaur. And I'm going to stamp this going across the sun. So let me just get my stamping block. Here it is. Thank you, Karen. It's a good tip that I need to a bit of masking tape on the back. I'm just going to stamp that across the sun so that the sun draws your attention. And there we go. I'm just going to just clear up a little bit just so we've got a bit of a mess. And I'm just going to get my paper trimmer. I'm 
I'm just going to use the edge of the stencil as a guide of where I want to cut first of all. So I'm just going to just chop it there. And I'm going to chop the other side. It already looks neat to done to get rid of those edges. And then because I'm using um, one of these top felt cards, so I'm going to use it on its side, I just need to work out where to cut the rest of this. So I'm just going to loosely put it over this. And I know that I want my first cut line to be just above the sun. So I'm going to cut it kind of around. You see on there. I want that sun to be nearly in the top corner, so I'm just going to cut slightly above the sun, and that's going to be my first cut line. So let's do that one. And then I could put that onto the card, and we can see where we want the next one to be. So, so I know, looking at this, I'm going to use the top of that green line there, going across. There's three green lines and I forgot which one. Let me go. Okay, let's try it on that one. I'm going to take it a bit higher. There we go. Perfect. So I'm just moving my trimmer out of the way now. I'm just going to mount that onto some dark blue just to give you a little bit of an edge. I was going to do green, but I thought the blue actually looked nice, so it just kind of made it pop a little bit more. So I just use my tape runner for this today. Let's put this down. Do a nice thin border because we don't want to lose effect of this lovely stencil work, do we? That's lovely. I'm just going to bring the trimmer back in and we're just going to trim this now so it's got the same kind of border around each edge. I'm just going to use the tape runner again to secure this to the front of the top fold card. So let's put that onto there. Let's put that to one side. So now what we're going to do is we need a character to go on the hills. So we're going to use the dinosaur. It's like, it looks like it's walking across, I just saw that up for you all to see. So I think this one looks really well. So it looks like it's having a little walk through the park. So we can position him where we want to. Um, just a good little card really, so let's um, put him on there. So I've got a bit of um, watercolour card. I'm just going to stamp this image on there. Because it's a bigger image, I'm just going to use the stamping platform. I've got this little one under here. I don't want it to slip, you see. Let's make sure that's got a good imprint. And at least doing it this way, if we do miss, you can go back in and have a second attempt at stamping. Make sure that's pushed down. Oh, I'm happy with that, that's a nice crisp image. We'll just move that to one side. I'm just going to blast that off with the um, hot air gun. Just make sure the ink's dry before we try and watercolour. There we go. I'm just going to move some of this out of the way. Normally this this matter. Now I've got some watercolours here. I 
can see I've already been doing this lot, I've got some greens here already, so we'll reactivate these. Different shades. So I'm just going to wet the dinosaur where I want to put the majority colour down. So I tend to put a lighter colour down everywhere. So let's just quickly just wet the main area of him. And you could do this with your um, alcohol markers or whatever you've got at home, but I do, do find that you get a little bit more detail with the watercolour. You don't have to be as precise, you can be a little bit more loose with it. So let's just go in and give them a little bit of a light green underneath. And the thing is, if it goes wrong, who knows? Nobody knows what dinosaur looks like. Yours. Let's take that green next to a head. I'm just going to do these on its back now. So I'm not bothered about if the green contaminates it, because we're going to go in with a darker green anyway and cover it up. There we go. Do all these other ones. darker one as well just to give it a little bit of contrast. And then do it back. I'm just going to mix a bit of this blue in now to make it a bit darker. And then I'll pull them two colours together. What do you prefer using at home? Do you like your watercolours or your, your alcohol markers? What's your favourite? Have you had any more dinosaur jokes as well? Have I missed them? That's that. And then I'm just going to use some of this older colour just to fill in the back ones. lines are on the stamp I'm just going to put a little bit more colour so it shows a bit more dimension and I think we could go even more vibrant on some of these little spots here just to bring them out a little bit we'll do his toenails we'll do it if it weekend then Just following the black lines to give a little bit more depth. So I'll just put a little bit more just a bit of darkness on this bit. Just to break that solid blue up. his leg. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to quickly dry that off again just because it's watercolour. I'd normally leave it to dry a little bit longer but that's that. Fell out the dye that we've got. I'm so happy about these dyes, I really am. It saves so much time. I'm just going to put a little bit 
masking tape on to hold it this time so it's bigger die. And put that through the die cutter. Let's move this away while we're doing that. 